It's a great joy to gather once more here in the Cathedral of St. Patrick and St. Coleman for the Chrism Mass. The anointing with the oil of chrism has a special significance in the life of the church. Whenever at the end of this Mass I consecrate the chrism in communion with the priests who are present here, the first thing I do is to breathe over the oil. That's to symbolize the coming down of the Holy Spirit. And it's also to emphasize the life-giving, sanctifying character of the sacraments where chrism is used. You see, chrism marks us out for a special service. Through anointing with chrism, we are consecrated. We're set apart to serve God. And that is why holy chrism belongs to the sacraments of baptism, confirmation, and ordination. Because these are the sacraments which impart an indelible character on us. They seal us with a particular calling and service in mind so that we may be God's witnesses in the midst of a busy world. But what does this setting apart mean nowadays, this consecration for special service? Well, in the early decades of the church, people noticed that Christians were different. They were kind of a people apart. And that was because they were prayerful. They had a great sense of charity. They were joyful and happy people. Christians had a peaceful nature. And they were willing to suffer for their faith. But one of the things that people noticed about these Christians was the kind of unity and communion that they had within them. See how these Christians love one another, they said. And here we are 2,000 years later, and our challenge as modern-day Christians is to be just as remarkable, to be a people set apart, to be recognized as people who are not afraid to witness to Christ, the Anointed One. Nowadays, of course, to be like Christ in an increasingly secularized world, it often means being countercultural. Our Christian convictions sometimes set us apart from many of the prevailing opinions within society. You take, for example, our very firmly held beliefs in the sacredness of human life from the first moment of conception until the moment of natural death. Or our church's understanding of the importance of marriage and the family as the fundamental building blocks of society in the church. Our Catholic Church's social teaching about the fair distribution of goods, for example, in the world, care for creation, our concern for the weakest among us, for the poor. In these issues, we often find ourselves swimming against the tide of secularism and moral relativism, where our challenging opinions are sometimes ignored or indeed on occasions can be shut down altogether by a so-called cancel culture. Something in particular which takes a lot of conviction and courage nowadays is to answer God's call to be a priest. And yet, when someone does embrace the life of a priest and cooperates with the help of God's grace, it's such a great, fulfilling vocation. In a few moments, we priests will be renewing our priestly promises before God and before you, our people. And we all know how special it is to give our lives to God in priestly service. And also how important and special it is for us to serve you pastorally, our people. It's a great privilege to be able to teach the gospel, to bring you the sacraments, especially the Eucharist. It's such a wonderful privilege to be able to celebrate Mass. And also, of course, to help you and work with you in making the world a better place. The life of a priest is so fulfilling. In a few weeks' time, on Vocation Sunday, we're going to begin 
a year which is dedicated to prayer and promotion of vocations in Ireland. And this year, the focus will especially be on diocesan vocations to the priesthood. Now, you know, at the moment, we don't have enough priests. We're getting a bit older. You might have noticed this morning as we came up the aisle. <laughs> but interestingly, the theme of the year of vocations is take the risk for Christ. And during this year, I invite you, my brother priests, to tell the story of your vocation, your personal story, why you decided to become a priest, and share it. Share it with young people especially. It's good for them to hear why we chose to be priests. And also tell them about the great happiness and joy that there is in being a priest today, in courageously following Jesus. Now, I'm not saying it's a perfect life. It does have its ups and downs, but so does married life. And I'm sure that you would say, marriage is a wonderful vocation. It's great joy, but uh, not always. But any vocation takes sacrifice and commitment. So priesthood's no exception. We're not special. We just happen to have followed this call from God, which we felt when we were younger, and we said our yes. So I encourage you, the priests here today not to be afraid to say thanks to God this year for the gift of the priesthood. And of course, say thanks to our people, people like yourselves, who are such a great encouragement to us by your prayers and your resources and your words of uh, comfort and your words of keep on going, Father, we need you. They really make a difference in today's Christmas Mass. The people of God who are gathered are invited to pray for their priests and bishops, that the Lord may pour out his gifts abundantly upon us and keep us faithful as ministers of Christ the High Priest. I'm delighted that some of our seminarians are here today, and I pray also for the seminarians for the Diocese of Dromour, Anthony and Philip, who are continuing their studies in Maynooth and in uh, Spain. And I'm also delighted that Deacon Carlos, who's here today, will be getting our day next month. And Carlos will be praying for you, especially in the coming days. I'm also delighted to congratulate some of the priests of the Diocese of Dromore who are celebrating significant anniversaries this year, like their Silver Jubilees, Golden Jubilees, Diamond Jubilee. And it's important to us to mark our priesthood. So please, celebrate with us and pray for us. It's interesting that the readings today speak of us all being a line of kings, priests, to serve our God and Father. In fact, when you were baptized, every one of us here, when we were baptized, we were anointed with chrism as priest, prophet, and king. All of the baptized share in the priesthood of Christ. That's important to remember. That means we also share in the joy of proclaiming the gospel. As today's gospel says, to proclaim liberty to captives, new sight to the blind, to set the downtrodden free. All Christians are anointed with chrism. We're all sent to bring the good news of mercy into a world which is often merciless and unforgiving. The oil which is used in the sacraments comes from olives. And remember what happens to the olives to make the oil? They're crushed. They are pressed. And it's the same fruit which grew abundantly in the Garden of Gethsemane, where Jesus suffered. Oil which the ancient peoples used to soothe, to comfort, to strengthen. It's very interesting that the Greek word for olive oil and the Greek word for mercy share the same root, Elios. So when we sang earlier the choir, Kyrie Eleison, that evokes not just Lord have mercy, but also Lord soothe me, comfort me, Lord anoint me. 
I invite you today, as the priests renew their priestly promises, and as we all together witness the blessing of the oils and the consecration of the chrism, to renew your own personal vocation as a baptized child of God with a mission to bring mercy, love, and the joy of the gospel into the world. And send the Holy Spirit as helper and hand upon this boy, which nature has provided to serve the needs of men. May your blessing come upon all who are anointed with this oil, that they may be freed from pain and illness and made well again in body, mind, and soul. Father, may this oil be blessed for our use in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you forever and ever. Lord God, protector of all who believe in you, bless this oil and give wisdom and strength to all who are anointed with it in preparation for their baptism. Bring them to a deeper understanding of the gospel, to help them to accept the challenge of Christian living, and lead them to the joy of new birth in the family of your church. I've noticed some of the boys and girls here from the different schools nearby. If you'd like to come up, because this is the oil that is used in the sacrament of confirmation, and I know that some of you will be receiving the sacrament soon. The actual oil is olive oil. You heard me mention in that area olive oil. Let us pray that God our Almighty Father will bless this oil so that all who are anointed with it may be inwardly transformed and come to share in eternal salvation. So we're going to breathe over the oil now as a sign that we're calling down the Holy Spirit. source of all growth and holiness, accept the joyful thanks and praise we offer in the name of your church. In the beginning at your command, the earth produced fruit bearing trees. From the fruit of the olive tree, you have provided us with oil for holy prison. The prophet David sang of the life and joy that the oil would bring us in the sacrifice of your life. After the avenging flood, the dove returning to Noah with an olive branch announced your gift of peace. This was a sign of a greater gift to come. By the waters of baptism wash away the sins of men, and by the anointing with olive oil you make us radiant with your joy. At your command, Aaron was washed with water, and your servant Moses, his brother, anointed him priest. This too foreshadowed greater things to come. After your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, asked John for baptism in the waters of the Jordan, you sent the Spirit upon him in the form of a dove, and by the witness of your own voice you declared him to be your only well-beloved Son. In this, you clearly fulfilled the prophecy of David, that Christ would be anointed with the oil of gladness beyond his fellow. And I invite all of the priests present to extend their right hands towards the crystal. And so, Father, we ask you to bless this oil which you have given us. Fill it with the power of your Holy Spirit through Christ Jesus. It is from him that Christ takes his name, and with Christ you have anointed for yourself priests and kings, prophets and martyrs. Make this crystal a sign of life and salvation. For those who are to be born again in the voice of Christ, what should they be evil they have inherited from sinful man? And when they are anointed with this holy oil, they can attend to your glory, radiant with the goodness of life that is the source of them. Through this sacrament, grant them royal, priestly, and prophetic power, and clothe them with incorruption. Let 
everybody great to see you thanks for coming